Today's show is sponsored by Curios Consulting. That is Curios with a Y, K-Y-R-I-O-S. Real estate investing can be intimidating. That's why you don't do it alone. Curios Consulting gets you from no real estate to your first rental property. My friend Steve did it right here in New Hampshire, and he wants to help other Christians do the same. Visit consultingbycurios.com. Again, that's with a Y, consultingbycurios.com. No more excuses. The world needs more Christians with passive income, not more passive Christians. Make it happen. The link is in the description. All right, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. We're going to do a video today. You know, I've been busy. I've been doing some work. I've been doing some fishing. I don't have any good fishing stories, unfortunately, for you, because it's been it's been pretty slow. It's been pretty slow, unfortunately. So uh, hopefully that'll turn around. But, you know, it's really hot, and sometimes the fish are a little finicky when it gets hot. But, uh, but in any case, I wanted to do a video because a couple of people have pointed out to me that, uh, and, and they, the way they presented it, of course, was like a gotcha. I gotcha. See, you're, you're inconsistent. You're, you know, you don't know what's going on. Specifically regarding the uh, abortion abolition thing and voting for people that aren't going to abolish abortion and stuff like that. And uh, I thought it was worth talking about because it is, uh, I'm not like a... I'm not like a, a political expert or anything like that. In fact, I don't really care for politics all that much. I do like uh, Trump, you know, and he, he brings a lot of entertainment value to politics. But I'm not the kind of guy that's going to watch a Trump speech or a Trump rally or debate. I, I don't do that kind of stuff. It's just not really part of what I do. I don't really care. But um, but uh, but I, my, my opinions on politics and Christians engaging in politics... Uh, have actually changed, and we've talked about it on the channel a little bit here and there, but I thought I'd, I figured I'd do an entire video just kind of explaining my thought process on it. Um, and maybe you'll find it helpful. I don't know. Maybe you, maybe you won't. <laughs> I mean, what do I know? But, um, you know, when I first got on YouTube, and up until fairly recently, I mean, I don't really know exactly when I changed, but it was, I don't know, probably within the last couple of years, maybe, maybe a year, I don't know. But, um... I really admired uh, like the Covenanters, right? You, I, there's a lot of things about the Covenanters that I that I still do admire, but I remember one time um, talking with my church about their position on voting, and uh, the Covenanters they don't vote. Well, at least the the ones in the time period that I was thinking about, they don't vote because um, they think it's unfaithful to to uh, to vote. Um, and they've got their reasons why, you know, the, the nation should be in covenant with God and all these things. I'm not going to get into that too much, but that's really kind of what my perspective was. It was more of like a purity thing, right? Like, like, um, and, and I sympathize very much with the, you know, abortion abolitionists who, you know, they'll fight against like things like heartbeat bills or, or things like that. Um, it, it's like that kind of perspective where it's like, look, if you're not going to treat, you know, the, 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 the babies with equal protection, like, then I'm not going to support what you're doing to try to save some babies. Like, it's just completely inconsistent, and you're going to be legally enshrining the, the murder of some babies by doing this kind of a heartbeat bill. I have a lot of sympathy for that argument, and actually, I do believe fundamentally in that argument. I think that's actually true um, in, in many ways. But but I've changed my view on politics because politics is not an it's not an all or nothing kind of thing. It's not like the Super Bowl, right? Like, like politics is 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 not like the Super Bowl. People, some one of the reasons people really like the Super Bowl is because it's just one game, right? And you go for broke, and like you you lay it all on the line, you leave it all on the field, you do whatever you have to do because there is no tomorrow, there is no next game. And so you've got to just do anything you can to win that game. You play to win the game. And so every trick that you have, everything that you that you um, that you that you any any lever that you have, you pull that lever. You know all that kind of stuff because there is no next game. It's there's no tomorrow. And football is kind of like that all the time, almost because you know there's only what is it, sixteen games, or they think they added a few games. I don't know. I'm not really that big of. I mean, I, I follow the NFL, but not like that closely. Um, but there's not that many games. So like every game is like the end of the world. If you lose the first couple of games, there's no coming back from that. Like, it's like, that's the end of it. I mean, I, I'm, I'm speaking just colloquially. Of course you can come back from, it. I'm just saying like, 
every there's so few games played that every game is a massive deal. And so you you got to do everything you can to win that particular game. And that's kind of how, you know, some people view politics where it's like, well, this is the most important election of our lifetime. It's the end all be all. If we lose it, then it all all hell breaks loose and stuff like that. And so it's got to be pure. It's got to be absolutely pure. It's got to be all or nothing. It's all or nothing. And I don't view politics like that anymore. I don't view politics like that anymore. I think that politics, just by its very nature, uh, is about uh, compromise. It, it really is. And so you've got to determine kind of what, what, your, what your goals are. You have to have a goal in mind. And then you have to take a look at you know, the steps that it would take to get there and the conditions that need to exist in order to get there. Because for me, you know, my, my goal and what I would prefer and I think what the ideal goal is for our country is that we would have a country that would, um, in its founding documents, acknowledge Christ as Lord. I think that would be good. It would be good for us to be, as a group, as a nation, uh, intentionally saying, look, we are a Christian nation we're doing Christian things, and we're going to acknowledge the Christian God. We're going to acknowledge Christ in everything that we do. And so it's like in that movie uh, Office Space where he's having that boring meeting, and he's like, you got to think, with every decision, is this good for the company? You know what I mean? Like, like that's, we should be doing that as a nation. Every decision that we make, we should be, it would be good. This is the goal. Is, is this helping us? To honor Christ as Lord. That's what that's the ideal situation. But that is not the situation that we find ourselves in. And so I think that having a very honest appraisal of your current situation in light of your goals, I think really helps you kind of figure out politics a little bit more. Because politics, especially in our situation where we've got so many divergent interests. And everyone is looking to have some kind of influence. We got to figure out, okay, what would be the situations that I could accomplish today? Like, what are the steps today that I can do that will lead to my eventual goal, right? And and here's the thing: you've got to you've got to separate this, I think, from the actual politicians themselves. Sometimes, like like I can say without without any hesitation that. That Trump's, you know, kind of like squishy, uh, you know, ness on abortion and stuff like that. And the Republican Party, you know, they soften some of the language around abortion. They've got different goals than they used to after this new, you know, thing came out or whatever. I can objectively say that that's not good. Uh, that, that's not good. And it's not good for them. Like as a leader, you, they, they're, they're not honoring Christ. And that is not good for them as leaders, right? And if I was magically made emperor of the United States, like I have to do things according to what you know God wants me to do. Like I can't justify, um, you know, compromises with you know in my role. Like I can't I can't get away with saying, well, yeah, 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 God, but you know, like yeah, the people wouldn't really like it that much if I if I uh, abolished abortion or. Or, uh, you know, a re- re- reverse women's suffrage. Like, they wouldn't really like it that much. So, like, I can't do it. God. You see, I can't really do it. I, don't, I wouldn't get away with that. So it's not like my action as in politics is not that of a leader. It's not that of, you know, the president or the king or whatever it is. My actions are different. They're, they're of a different kind. You know, they're, they're related, of course, but they're different. And so you can support President Trump knowing that he's going to accomplish or thinking at least that he's going to accomplish conditions that are better for your eventual goals than the other guy or in this case Carmela uh Heron Car- Carmela Herons Harris <laughs> you can you can do that knowing that yeah he's going to do a mix of good things and bad things but overall this is going to be helpful for my eventual goals down the line essentially it would be better if he was just an emperor and he could do everything right that i want him to do that's not available that's not an option available to me so here's how i think about politics it's a lot less like like the super bowl and it's more like the regular season in baseball because this is one thing uh, some people really don't like this about baseball but i do like this about base about baseball there's 162 games there's a game every day essentially 
So if you lay a stinker out there uh, one day, there's a game tomorrow too. So you, you instantly have to get it out of your head and move forward, right? Like there's always a game. And because there's always a game, you, you manage the games differently. Like in the NFL, you basically try to win every game. Like you have to go for broke all the time. In baseball, it's not like that. Like there are situations in baseball where you've got a starter who, who you know, gives up five runs in the first inning. And if you were just trying to win that game, like, and this happens in the playoffs in baseball too, where it's more important that you win every game. You pull that starter. I mean, he obviously doesn't have it. He's having a bad start. Like, he's given up five runs in the first inning. You know, maybe you, maybe you watched him play the second inning and he already got a few hard-hit balls. Like, you, you pull him right away if, you're, if you need to win that game. But in baseball, in the regular season, you might leave him in there knowing that this is going to make winning this game a lot harder. It's going to make it a lot harder. But because there's a game tomorrow... <laughs> I have to manage my my bullpen, my relief pitchers, so I don't want to like use all my relief pitchers because I don't want to get them too tired for tomorrow cuz tomorrow's game might be much closer. Like the starter tomorrow is probably not going to lay an egg. And so we're going to need some guys in the 6th, 7th, 8th inning to pitch, and I don't want them to be all tired from pitching four innings the ne- the day before. So you've got to think about the future. You've got to think about the next game. And so you've got to create the conditions. And sometimes you have to accept less than ideal outcomes for today in order to manage the next game. You've got to manage the whole entire 162 game season. And so there's going to be situations where, man, like Carlos Rodon laid another stinker, like his five runs in the first two innings. I'm going to, I have to leave him out there. I have to. And you talk to the pitcher about it, like, I'm going to leave you out here. Like, I know it's tough, but you've, you've got to give me five innings or whatever it is. Like, I need you to get to five innings. We can't use our bullpen. They're tired. You know what I mean? Like, you've got to think about setting yourself up for success for the rest of the series or the rest of the, of the, of the week or whatever it is. And the Mets are, like, the, the, the Mets are a perfect example of this because, like, we have a lot of decent starters. They don't give up a ton of runs necessarily, but they always throw a lot of pitches and they walk a lot of batters. And so the problem is that they're out of the game like in the fourth or fifth inning because they've thrown too many pitches and we're always in that bullpen and that bullpen is always gassed all the time. And so what ends up happening is we give up a lot of runs late and we lose a lot of games because our bullpen is just gassed all the time. And so we've got to, you know, Carlos Mendoza, the manager of the Mets, he's got to figure out how to work that out like so that it's not like that all the time. And so, so – Politics is more like baseball in that way. Like, you got to think about setting yourself up for success in the long run. It, it can't just be about the big game. It can't just be about the big election. It can't be like in, like in the Super Bowl where it's just one game and you leave it all in the field. If you don't win, that's it. Politics is never like that. But I think sometimes we treat it like that where it's like if we don't get everything, that's a loss and that's it. That's it. I mean, we just lost. We can't we can't support that. And sometimes you've got to you've you've got to accept less than ideal choices. And that's the thing. I think uh, it was I'm pretty sure it was it was uh, uh, Andrew Isker who said politics is always just the choosing between options. That's it. That's it. It's just there's there's a, there's a handful of options. Usually in our country, it's just two. There's two options. And you've got to consider, OK, what are my goals what are my options, my realistic options? And then how do, I, how do I set myself up to get those goals, right? Given my options right now, given the cards that I've been dealt, what do, well, how do I play this to my advantage in the future? And it can be hard to see that too because as a lot of people have noticed, <clears throat> at least like when it comes to the issue of abortion, for example, the differences between the parties, they're there, but they're not as big as they used to be. They're still pretty big, in my opinion, but they're not as big as they used to be. And so it can be difficult to think through that, but that's, that's the game. That's what you got to do. You've got to think like a baseball manager. How do I set my team up for success in the future? And here's, here's the truth about the Republican Party. The Republican Party is a wide tent. It's a wider tent than a lot of us would like. And but guess what? Christians are a smaller part of that party than we would have liked. It's, that's, that's a fact. 
We have a seat at the table. We've got a significant seat at the table, but we're not running the show. We are not running the show. That ship has sailed. We've given that up a long time ago. I've seen a lot of guys that I wasn't expecting acknowledge that fact. We gave that up. That's our bad. But we have a seat at the table, and it's a significant seat. And so we need to consider it that way. We need to consider what we've been dealt. Okay, we've done this. We've, we've put ourselves in this situation. These are the hand we've been dealt. We still got to eventually win, and we've got this hand. So what do we do? What do we do? And so when it comes to abortion, like, to, to me, this, this I'm not trying to insult anyone's intelligence, especially my abolitionist friends, because I totally understand where you're coming from. And I'm not trying to get you to vote. I don't, I don't care if you vote or not. I don't care if you vote or not. I mean, I, I'd be I'd be very hypocritical if I was like, oh, you have to vote. You have to do your Christian duty because I, I, you know, I know what that's like. I know I've been on the other side of that. You know, I don't think it's like you're Christian. You must vote, you know, to be faithful. I'm not saying that. But what I am saying is that the, the difference between uh, Trump and uh, Carmela, it's 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 not as stark as it used to be, but it's still pretty darn stark. It really is, because. One side is like, yeah, you know, like we got to leave it to the states and, you know, I'm, you know I'll, I'll talk against, you know, some of the more draconian abortion things. Not good. Not good for him. He's got to answer to God for that. I'm not saying that's good. But that's what one guy is saying. And then the other guy is saying, oh, yeah, we've got to we've got to make uh, we've got to re- bring back Roe v. Wade and we've got to make abortion a constitutional right. We have to do it. And they, and they will do that kind of stuff. That, that, that's the kind of stuff that they are effective at doing. They'll do that. They'll make it a constitutional right. That's what they're trying to do. Maybe they won't be able to, but I think they probably will. <laughs> and if the, at the very least, they're going to they're gonna ignore all of the, the precedent. They, that's what they do. I mean, there's going to be more abortions, and they're going to be more legal and more celebrated and more proud and all that kind of stuff. Now, now here's the thing. So... So, so you've got those two options. That's a pretty stark difference, even given the fact that it's not as stark as it used to be. And so you got to think to yourself, we want to ab- abolish abortion. I, I want to abolish abortion, yeah. I think it should be criminalized. I think that, uh, th- that women who get abortions, you know, the abortion doctors should be uh, 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 charged. I think the woman, women should be charged. I think the men who take their women there should be charged. I think all of that should happen. It should be just like in those fear commercials where the police comes and the, you know, the girl's all scared. Oh, and, and, and they haul her away. That's what I think should happen. I think that should happen. But you got to think to yourself, like a baseball manager. Okay. So today's game is, it, it, we're not really going to win today's game. You know what I mean? Like, we're, we're, you know, it's the seventh inning. We're down 11 to one. And, uh, you know, but I want to save some of my pitchers for tomorrow because I've got a game tomorrow. There's all, in politics, there's always a game tomorrow. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I might not win this game. But I'm going to put in my second baseman to pitch a few innings. <laughs> they do this. Baseball managers do this. They'll put in a position player to pitch a few innings because they're trying to save their bullpen. It's not something you would do under any circumstances if you had to win today. If you had to win today, you'd pitch all of your starters until their arms fought, fell off in order to win today. But in baseball, there's always a game tomorrow. And in politics, there's always a game tomorrow. So you want to set yourself up. And so maybe Trump, in your view, and this is not my view, I'm just saying maybe in your view, it would be like putting in the second baseman to pitch a few innings. Which, by the way, what I always find amazing is when they bring in a, a, a position player, a lot of times these guys are getting outs. What, what are these pitchers doing if the second baseman can come in on a moment's notice, no practice, and get some major leaguers out? I don't, I don't get it. I don't get it. Maybe uh, Mark Dewey can, uh, can help me with that one. How's that happen? <laughs> I think the hitters are, are trying to just hit home runs on every pitch so they, they get outs. But anyway, well, you got to think to yourself, okay, so, so maybe Trump's not ideal. I agree. Trump is not ideal. I think he's ideal for many things, but he's not ideal for abortion necessarily. But is it going to be easier for me to accomplish my goals if we've got the guy and we, and we decide as a nation we get the guy – who put in the judges, who got rid of Roe v. Wade. I know you guys don't think that matters. I don't care. I don't care about that. I'm not arguing that. But it is a symbolic move. You have to agree with that. Symbolically, that was a, that was a W. 
Would it be good as a nation to say, yes, that's right. He put those judges in, and we want them back. We want them back. Would that be easier for you to accomplish your goals, or would it be easier to accomplish your goals if the next guy, or in this case, Carmella, um, you know, leads the charge to, to, to make you know, Roe v. Wade the law of the land or to, to make an amendment or to you know, make it federally protected to kill your kids? Like, that's, would that be easier, or would the, would the other one be easier? Does, it help, does that move the ball forward, or does the other one move the ball forward? I think I honestly I think the the answer is very simple. Now I know a lot of you guys say, "Well, I would be compromising myself if I vote." Fine, I'm not telling you to vote. I'm not telling you to vote. But um, I, I think when it com- when it comes to politics, that's kind of how I see it now. I don't see it like the Super Bowl anymore. I don't see it like I've got to have complete like. Like, 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 there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a pure, I have to have purity in my own heart before the Lord. I get that. And so you guys too, you do what you got to do, right? But I don't see politics as a, as an arena really for purity. I don't, I don't think it's, I don't think it's possible given the nature of our current situation. And so the, the nature of our current situation kind of requires us to, to build for the future to think like that baseball manager. The, the nature of our current situation is that we're losing 12 to, 1 to 12. Like, we've got one run. They've got 12 runs. We're losing. That's the nature of our current situation. So we've got to figure out, okay, well, we're probably not going to win this game. You know what I mean? And the good news is we don't have to win this game. This isn't the Super Bowl. What we do have to do is be faithful with what we've been given. That's what we do have to do. And so when we've give, been given you know, one talent, we, we have to use that one talent to turn some kind of a profit. We've got to do business with that one talent. And that doesn't mean that we failed if we only got the one talent and we didn't make 20 talents. That's not what it is. But what we can't do is bury it in a little bushel and maybe get a little bit of interest here and there. And then hand that to God and say, God, here you go. I knew you were severe. I didn't want to do anything wrong. I wanted to be pure. I wanted to make sure that you were whole. How could I risk the talent you've given me? I wanted to make sure at least you were whole. Here you go. What you have is yours. There you go. In the parable, God does not look too kindly on that kind of attitude. In fact, very harsh (laughs) against that kind of attitude. We've got to think like baseball managers. That that's the thing. And so I I'm not again, I'm not telling you you need to vote. I'm not gonna say that. I've never said that about anybody, anything. I'm never gonna say that. That's just not gonna be me. Oh yeah, I can't say never. Who knows? Maybe I'll change some more. Cause I have I have changed my opinion here. I used to look at it more like I've gotta have total purity. I can't risk anything to move the ball forward. I can't. That's how I used to look at it. I'm not saying that's how you look at it. I'm saying that's how I used to look at it. So please don't get crazy on me. <laughs> I still support you. I'm still an abolitionist. I'm not in your club. I know that I'm not in your club. I know I'm not an official abolitionist, but I still believe in abortion abolition. And if I was king for the day, I would abolish abortion. <laughs> if, if I was king for the day. But, uh, but, and I don't want to be king for the day, by the way. Just, just so you know. But, um... But I look at the I look at I look at politics now. In my opinion, as I need to win, but I also need to engage with the situation that we've been given. I need to engage in reality as much as possible. And the reality is, as much as I hate this, uh, Christians don't have the cachet or the influence that they used to have. We still have got to be faithful with the influence we do have because it still is significant, and we can move the ball forward. Um, we've just got to move the ball forward, and you, you, it's going to be. It's gonna, we're going to have to eat a little humble pie with some of it. It's as simple as that. We're going to have to eat a little humble pie. And uh, the Democrats, you know, platform is still top to bottom evil all the way down at every point. That's still the case. And even when I used to say, you know, you can't, you know, Democrats should be church disciplined. I still believe that, of course. But my case was never just because of abortion. It was because it's top. To da- po- top to bottom evil. It's not like, well, you know, I'm, I'm going to vote Democrat. Like, I don't really like the abortion thing, but all the other stuff is totally good and holy. 
It's not like that. It's completely upside down morality. It's 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 evil from top to bottom. Republicans, you know, platform is not as good as it used to be, but it's pretty much the same as it used to be. I mean, let's just face it. I mean, Republicans haven't been great on abortion either. But it's not officially, it's not as good as it used to be, but it still has good. <laughs> and there's still plenty of things that you can throw your support behind 100%. And not only that, but they're not against Christians. They're not run by Christians, and they're not you know, tiptoeing around Christians anymore. And that's not a good thing. It's, that's, that's not a good thing. They're not doing that anymore, but they're, st- they're not against us. And they actually are. They, they do want us to participate. They, they want us to be part of it. They're not against Christians. They're not against Christianity. They're not, they don't have a completely upside-down morality. I'm not looking to them for advice on morality. I know that they don't have it for me. I get it. I get it. I don't, I don't, I don't worship uh, you know, the Republican Party, obviously. I don't worship Trump, you know? I mean, this is the thing. Like, it's still possible to be, look at Trump and say, hey, bad move on the abortion thing. Not a, great, not a great move, J.D. Vance, but still throw your support behind their candidacy. It's not that you're ador- endorsing every position that they have, but it's kind of knowing your, your place, you know, knowing your role in this, and knowing that we have a game tomorrow, too. It's not the Super Bowl. We've got a game tomorrow, too, and I've got to move the ball forward. We've got to win. We will win at some point. We need to manage the resources we've been given, just like Carlos Mendoza, just like Aaron Boone, although, you know, he's not that great. (laughs) We've got to manage the resources that we have to have a successful, you know, entire campaign, a, a successful 162. There's a game tomorrow, guys. There's a game tomorrow. There's a game beyond this next election cycle, and we need to think about that game. That's my, that's my take on politics. It has changed. It's completely changed. And I think that I was viewing politics, it, 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 if I had to put it in a nutshell, I was viewing politics kind of the way I view theology, where you know, you, you know, there's, there's a clean, you know, correct, and precise answer for you. And, you know, you there, you need to have pure thoughts about God. You need to understand God, and you, you, you desire to not be wrong about anything. You know, you think you're right about the things about God. Like, you, there's, there's an exactness to it. There's a precision to it. Politics is not like that. It isn't. It isn't. And it, it, it doesn't mean that we have to leave it in the muck and the mire for forever. No, we want it to be more pure than it is, but politics is a messy game and you got to deal in reality we're dealing with people it's just it's a, it's a it, you, anyway i think i've made my point so i don't view politics the same way i view theology that doesn't mean they're disconnected so before anyone gets crazy i'm not saying that they're disconnected and that theology can't inform or doesn't inform politics i'm not saying that but they're different and i think we need to acknowledge that they're different in any case, yeah, I'm still voting for Trump. That's right. I'm voting for Trump. I don't really know a whole lot about J.D. Vance. I do know that he wrote that book. Never read it. Um, but I, I do, my main data point on J.D. Vance is that he's kind of angered all the right people. And in my book, that counts for something. So my contrarian indicators are, are saying that J.D. Vance was a great pick. And uh, they're going to be going up against uh, Carmella and uh, who knows who else. I mean, a lot of people think maybe Booty Gig would be would be really funny. I think Booty Gig would be funny. That would be a good one. But uh, in any case, that's my video. Hope you found it helpful. God bless. Fuego, puro fuego es mi amor por-